I want to first and foremost congratulate all of the graduates today. <clears throat> we have worked hard, we've reached our goals, and attained our dreams. It was not always easy, but we did it. Many thanks also need to go to my husband and my two children. They helped me in countless ways and always offered support and encouragement. Please don't forget that you are my motivation and always a focus of my dreams. I also need to express my sincere gratitude to the staff and faculty of WGU. You each helped to make this day a possibility and a reality for so many of us. Thank you. And to my mentor, Stan, thank you so much for your constant support, encouragement, patient, and the occasional reminders of goal timelines and deadlines. Without your help, I'm sure I would not have made it. Thank you. Okay. Like all of us, I'm here because I had a need, a goal, and a bit of a dream. Throughout my life, I've had many dreams, some that have been short-lived, some not completely thought through, and others that have provided me with the motivation and drive I needed to get where I am today. <clears throat> As a kid, I was the one that was convinced they were going to be an astronaut. I studied stars, planets, distant moons, rocket design, the whole thing. I was a member of the Young Astronauts program and slept with pictures of the Challenger crew around my bed. Even when the shuttle exploded on live TV in front of my grade school class, I was not swayed. If anything, it made me study harder. I moved into junior high and high school still with this dream in mind. It took, I took every class that my tiny rural school district could provide, including 6 a.m. satellite-based advanced math and science classes, knowing that I was bettering my chances at success in college and attaining my dream. It was somewhere around my sophomore or junior year that I got a hold of an astronaut candidate application. It was the first real blow to my dream that I couldn't fix. In addition to the general education ex expectations, it very clearly stated that the people applying to the program must be at least five foot five inches and have nearly perfect eyesight. I got my first pair of glasses when I was five years old, and as far as I could tell, the genetics for height that I needed had all gone to my sisters. <laughs> At first, I was very frustrated and disappointed, and in true teenage girl fashion, I, let, I felt to me that all I had worked for and studied towards had been taken away, and I could do nothing about it. After a bit of time and a couple reminders from my teachers and parents that the engineers and doctors responsible for astronauts most likely had good reasons for their requirements and were not conspiring against me, I found new focus. I could still be part of space exploration if I worked more towards the science of the missions instead of focusing only on space flight. I could be the one that designed the experiments and evaluated the data. I might not be able to be there myself, but my ideas could be. This was the dream that motivated me as I entered college and worked my way through a degree in physics. I felt like everything was falling into place and I would soon be on my way to graduate school and my dream of career in space science. <coughs> what I didn't realize was that life has its own plans. I didn't spend my time solely in the physics lab while I was in college. And it was during one winter on a nearby ski slope that I met and fell in love with my wonderful husband. We soon married and had a son shortly after I graduated. It was this wonderful twist of fate that forced me to take a really hard look at my dreams for my career and what was best for my new family. I compromised by telling myself and others that I would just take a little break. I would stay home with my son while he needed me and then I would pick up my graduate studies later. It took a little while, but I adjusted to life out of academics. I loved the time I had with my husband and son, but also felt like a bit like I needed some more direction and focus in my life. I knew I'd made the right choice, but I still missed my old dream. But not all hope was lost. I was given an opportunity to refocus when I got a phone call from the superintendent of my old high school. The start of the school year was just a few weeks away, and he was still in need of a science teacher. He offered me the position, and I accepted. I was granted an emergency teaching license and given full responsibility for the middle and high school science classes. 
This meant teaching six different science classes every day, ranging from middle school life science to junior senior, senior physics. To say it was a challenge is an understatement, but it gave me the chance to share my love of science and learning with the next generation. I had found a new dream in my students and helping them to understand and appreciate the world of science. This is where Western Governors came into my life. In order for me to keep my new job and gain a full teaching license, I needed to complete a master's degree in education. I searched long and hard for a school and a program that would meet my needs as well as understand the fact that I had a job and a growing family. The nearby universities offered distance programs in education, but they still required long hours of on-campus class time, a significant commute, and took time away from my family and my job. It was a lucky internet search that finally led me to the WGU website. I was instantly intrigued by the offered programs and the fact that I would never have to attend class on campus. I could work at my own pace, in my own home, and when I had the time. While this was not always as easy as it had first sounded, it was truly the answer to my prayers. The degree that I have, learned, have earned has helped me not only get my full teaching license, but has also helped me get back to my original dream. Through my time as an educator, I have developed working relationships with both, with both NASA and NOAA in the fields of curriculum development. My degree has let me become a bigger part of those projects and get back to the science that first inspired me. Currently, I am working with NASA's Themis program, developing study guides to help inspire and educate middle and high school students in solar and space physics and planetary magnetic fields. I may not be the one that is gathering the data, but I am helping those scientists organize and explain it in a way that younger budding scientists can understand. Just the other day, an old family friend and I were talking, and he mentioned that he had heard something interesting on the radio. NASA is accepting applications for the astronaut candidate program. And now, corrective eye surgeries like Lasix are okay, and the new shuttle had adjustable seats. <laughs> he wanted to know if I'd submitted my application yet. So as we celebrate this day, I want all of us to remember that dreams are important. They serve as our drive, motivation, and inspirations. But they must also be dynamic. We need to let them change, refocus, and be reborn. Thank you.